Reading. This bill is set down for committee stage forthwith. I declare the House in committee for consideration of the Criminal Procedures Legislation Bill. Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker. Morena, ki ora tātou nō reira te whare, inga iwi, inga rio, inga haue whā tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Good morning, honourable members. As the Speaker has stated, the House is in committee on the Criminal Procedure Legislation Bill. The minister is not seeking leave, right? Well, the question, uh, well, well, the question is therefore that part one stand part, and it's debate on clauses three to seventeen and schedule one. I call the honourable member Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we indicated in the second reading uh, just a short while ago, Labour uh, supports. Uh, this bill. This bill uh, makes some very important and very necessary tidy-ups to a very substantial piece of legislation that has worked its way through this House in a very deliberate, very careful, very considered sort of way. This will be the biggest set of changes to our criminal uh, justice system, to our criminal procedures in, uh, in many, many years. And it's always important, sir, when we are considering big change, particularly to an area as important as the administration of criminal justice, that we get it right and we take our time to do so. That, as my colleagues have pointed out in their second reading speeches, contrasts with the approach taken to some other legislation by this government. But on this occasion, uh, the government and the minister in charge uh, is doing the right thing and has actually, in the process of this particular bill, uh, taken time to consider, to listen to and to accede to the points made by uh, not only by uh, members on this side of the House, but to those who have submitted on it. And, <coughs> sir, in this part of the bill, there are a number of parts that I think are very important. It highlights how, when the House is considering large pieces of legislation and significant legislation, how even reasonably um, what might seem uh, trivial aspects of it passing through the, the House and, and its stages in its, uh, in its first phase can be overlooked, uh, but it is good that there is time to correct the mistakes that have been made. And so I want to acknowledge particularly in relation to uh, Clause 14A, uh, and this was a change made um, as a result of the Select Committee's consideration of the bill, the power of the judge or the registrar to waive uh, fees, certain fees imposed by the court, uh, particularly in relation to access to documents. <clears throat> and also the provision, uh, Clause 14b, the arrangements for and the provisions for access to court documents. These are very important. These are very important not just for those uh, in the course of a trial or the setup of a trial, but actually often what happens is an aggrieved defendant <clears throat> considers they haven't been dealt with properly, not sure whether there is, it's appropriate for an appeal, and wants to consider the matter and to get timely access to documents without the obstruction of the, the, uh, the risk of fees and charges, can get access to it, uh, and it's good to see that, that change has been made. And then, of course, the very important uh, provision in this part, Clause 15, dealing with the Henry VIII Clause that was in the original legislation, that is now gone, and uh, this House is rightly saying that uh, changes to other legislation, particularly with reference to a clause, a, a term like crime, should probably have the scrutiny and consideration of this House and its proper lawmaking function. And so that appears in here. So we welcome these changes, sir. We welcome this bill. This is a good piece of legislation and uh, it has been properly and well considered by the House. We only hope that the example given by this bill might be replicated in other pieces of legislation uh, being promoted and, uh, and pushed through this House by this Government. This stands as a as a benchmark to be observed and considered in other legislation. Uh, and so it is, uh, it is good that we are able to do that, this on this occasion, even if it is an urgency 
and even if it isn't buttered up to uh, more insidious and I think um, uh, insidious legislation and legislation that poses greater risks to the liberty of the individual and citizens than perhaps the criminal procedure legislation. But to the government and the minister in charge is to be acknowledged and, uh, and they are entitled to have the credit of having managed this piece of legislation and this bill properly uh, to the point where, that we are now um, finalising these aspects so that by the 1st of July we will have a good quality criminal justice system that, uh, and, and legislation that ought to pave the way to reduce delays and provide people the sort of fairness and procedural fairness that we expect to have uh, in our system. So I referred to you last night in my speech about the rule of law uh, index. Uh, New Zealand ranks seven out of 97 countries that are presently measured for the principle of the rule of law. This legislation keeps us there. Let's not compromise our standing in the international community by rushed pieces of legislation that compromise the rights and liberties of our citizens. The question is that part one stand par. Uh, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Sorry, the, the Honourable Phil Goff. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um